Alright guys, last video for C3, C4. Distance between a point and a plane. So I'm just doing the same example from class where we had to find the distance between this plane that, I don't know, tried to draw, and this point, 10, 3, negative 8. So we want to find, it's always assumed that you want to find the shortest distance between the point and the plane. Okay, so that shortest distance is the perpendicular distance from the point to the plane. So we're going right there, and it's perpendicular. So what we want to find is actually the equation of this line so that we can find this point here as the point of the intersection between this line and this plane. That's the easy way, easiest way to do this. So we got a point. We're going to attach it to our plane with a line that goes directly to the plane. And we want to figure out the equation of this blue line is our first step. We want to know the equation of this line. And the reason we want the equation is because eventually we want to know what this point is. That's right on the plane because that's the point that's going to help us figure out the distance between the point, 10, 3, negative 8, and the plane, this blue line here. Or actually this like highlighted part of the blue line, we want to know that distance. And in order to get that point, <coughs> to get that point, it's right where the plane and the line intersect. Say hi. Okay, so we're trying to find the intersection between the plane and the line so that we can find that point. Okay, say hi. Hi. All right, so first step, find the equation of this blue line. Okay, equation of the line. So to find the equation of a line in vector form, remember we need this point. So we need a point that's on our line, which, hey, 10, 3, negative 8 is a point on our line. So why don't we use that? 10, 3, negative 8. Perfect. Plus, then the next thing that's usually in an equation of a line is a direction vector here. So we need a direction vector for this line. And a great direction vector would be the normal vector to the plane. Because you know the normal vector to the plane is the perpendicular vector. So the normal vector to the plane <coughs> is the line that's perp or the vector that's perpendicular to this plane. And hey, our line is perpendicular to this plane. So that's perfect. So we're going to use our normal vector as our direction vector. So that vector is 4, 2, one. So now we've got the equation of that blue line. Perfect. So we use the point and the normal vector. Okay, now we need to know, hey, where does this line intersect the plane for x plus 2y plus z minus 16 equals 0? So where did these two things intersect? will be right at that point that we want to find. So if we want to find their point of intersection, we're just finding the point of intersection between a line and a plane, which we've done before. The easiest way to do that is to put our line in parametric form. So our line would be x equals 10 plus 4t, y equals 3 plus 2t, and z equals negative 8 plus t. So there's our parametric form, and now we can just sub our x into here, our y into there, and our z into there to solve for t. You could pause the video right now and try to do it yourself and see if you get the same answer as me. Okay. Pause? Well, they could. Okay, so 4x, so 10 plus 4t. I was saying they should pause it and try it themselves and then see if they get the same answer as I do. I do <laughs> Here. 
minus 16 equals 0. Okay, so I subbed in x, y, z. And now I'm just going to expand my brackets. So 40 plus 16t plus 6 plus 4t minus 8 plus t minus 16 equals 0. Whoosh, okay, 16, 21, oh yeah, I remember this question. 21t equals, I feel like it was negative 22. We did it in class. Uh-huh. Okay, no, no, no. Sydney. Sorry. So then t is equal to negative 22 over 21. So that value right there, we can sub back into our parametric equations for all the t's, and then that will give us the point where they intersect. And I think in class, I kind of got lazy, and I switched my decimal to a fraction. Or sorry, eh, I switched my fraction to a decimal. It was like negative 1.0 something. 4, 7, I'm just guessing. I don't have my calculator on me. Okay, so I'm going to sub um, okay, sorry, so that was, it was negative 1.0476, confirmed it. You can keep it as a fraction though if you're awesome. Okay, so we're going to sub t back into our parametric equations. Um, so we can figure out what x, y, and z equal. And z negative 8 plus, I'm just going to make that negative 8 minus 1.0476. Okay, and let's figure out what these are. So we got 10 plus 4 times 1.076 equals 5.8 for x. 3 plus 2 times 1.0476, negative 0.9. I should probably keep more decimal places, but it's okay. Rule of thumb, keep like four decimal places until you get to the final answer, which we're not at the final answer yet. Negative 9.0476. So I should have done that for the other two, sorry. All right, so now we're trying to find, okay, let me sum up what we've just done. So we had a plane and a point, and we're trying to find the distance from this point to this plane, the shortest distance, which is the perpendicular distance. So we know this point right here is 10, 3, negative 8. And we've just found this point, which is 5.8 something something, 0.9 something something, and negative 9.0476. So we've got now both points, and we just have to find the distance between them. So we're doing like a Pythagorean theorem kind of thing to figure out the distance. We're just going to subtract our x, y, and z coordinates, and then do Pythagorean theorem. So to find the distance between those two lines, we're doing... 10 minus 5.8 squared plus 3 minus 0.9 squared plus negative 8 minus negative 9.0476 squared. And once you do all those calculations, I believe our final answer was 4.8 units. So that is the total distance that we were trying to find out. Awesome. So that's finding the distance from a point to a plane. And that is not the only method. There are a whole bunch of different methods. So if you can find one that works for you, feel free to use it.